We're at the 29th IFC. I'm talking to Cole Holwiger, who is CEO of Telephone Fundraising Agency Pelham Bells, who has just delivered with Daryl Apsall a session on new frontiers in telephone fundraising. Now, Cole, you're predicting big things for the telephone in the next few years. Can you tell us why that is? Uh, basically, because um, I think as fundraising strategy and charities change their emphasis away from generating cash gifts onto monthly giving, then in that sort of situation, the telephone will come to dominate as a key communication channel that charities are going to use. We're already starting to see that in the UK, where the majority of charities have supporter bases made up of regular monthly givers, and, most importantly, they now tend to spend more money on the telephone than they do on direct mail. So we're talking really as a communications and stewardship device, or are we talking about um, donor acquisition as well? Well, that's what's quite exciting. We're talking about both. There's no doubt about it. As soon as any charity starts to move towards monthly giving, then the telephone is the key channel to be used to upgrading the value of those monthly givers, particularly because you have a char with a charity and a telephone call, you get 30 to 50% participation upgrade programs compared to maybe three or four percent on mail but the real exciting thing is a start certainly over the last three to four years of a telephone being used for acquisition so acquiring new monthly givers into the organization but we're not just talking about cold calling here are we? no it's, a bit it's more certainly not than that. cold calling at all and in fact you know cold calling doesn't work on the telephone the real secret of what's happened is people learning that by using a two-step approach to acquisition, you can make it work on the telephone. And what I mean by a two-step approach is that the first step is about identifying hand raises, getting people to do or say something which expresses an interest in a particular charity or cause, and then following it up with a second stage where we're actually using the telephone to convert those individuals onto a regular giving programme. And what are some of the ways that you can find these, uh, or uh, you can hand raise? Okay, a number of different ways. I mean, the best way, obviously, is probably to look at your own internal data lists. You know, look at the lists of campaigners you may have, volunteers, people who participate in events. They will be the most effective way for a charity to find a prospect database and then to call those people to convert onto monthly giving. You can then also start to look at generating names of lifestyle surveys. A lot of interesting things are happening on the web in terms of generating names of you know, prospects from web prospecting and then converting them onto regular giving programs. And some really great case studies out there. I mean, Save the Children, probably the best example. Early in the year, they ran an SMS campaign about the situation in Gaza. They generated over 180,000 people texting the word ceasefire into their organisation. Everybody who texted in was followed up with a telephone conversion call. 10% of those people converted onto a monthly giving programme. Lots of examples like that going on out there. And what about prospecting on the street, the, um, the, the variant of face-to-face -face yeah, fundraising? Yeah, that's a really, really useful method as well. I mean, Oxfam, probably some of the pioneers around that, they first ran street prospecting with their Amin campaign. Approaching people in the street, not to ask them to take out a regular gift, but to commit to the AMIN campaign. And then two to three weeks later, following that up with a conversion call onto monthly giving. That's the way forward. There's plenty of organisations leading the way on that. I think many of us are going to follow suit as well. Now, are all these methods, are these, these hand-raising methods, the ways of, of, of doing some kind of cool or cold recruitment, enough to offset the threat from the telephone preference service uh, with the more numbers of people being becoming unavailable? To uh, yes, contact. I think they are, because all of the methods that are used around the two-step processes, um, you know, all of those methods, you, know, you get people to opt in to the process around it. So you actually ask people's permission to receive a future telephone call. And the way that the telephone preference service works a moment around it, if people have expressed an interest and asked to have future contact from the new organisation, then obviously you're entitled in terms of to call those people up. The interesting thing I think around the TPS is that many people were worried when the TPS was actually introduced into the UK that it was going to have a big impact on, you know, on telephone use by charities. If anything, it's been exactly the opposite. And I think one of the benefits around the TPS in the UK, it, it's made sure that you know, a lot of the commercial companies who are maybe not indulging in very good practice around telephone use don't do that anymore. So it is starting to make people much more willing to receive phone calls. And I come back to it time and time again. We've done lots of different case studies where we can demonstrate that people who actually receive telephone 
telephone calls are much more responsive to future fundraising activities. They give more money and they save the organisation for a much longer time. So it's interesting times for Telephone Ahead. Certainly is. Carl, thanks very much.